Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Fuse. Sam I.B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks. And of course, it is part two of the massive Fukushima update. Low def people, if uh, the screen just got blotted out. That is posted for live viewers and it goes on my channel. If you want a nice, clean, high def version, then just give it a minute to load. And you guys, who I'm pointing at now, that's the high def camera that has the same show in ultra awesome uber quality. Friends, we're going to get right into it. It's some of the most important news that there is today. And you guys, thankfully, have been sharing this information and trusting me to give it to you. And as always, I will find you the most factual, up-to-date uh, Fukushima information that I possibly can. Anynews.com. Food products heavily contaminated by Fukushima found in the United States. Over 30,000 PCI per kilogram of cesium, which has been known to lead to heart disease and cancers, particularly thyroid. Also had cobalt-60 and antimony-124. The FDA, we found no Fukushima contamination in the food supply during routine monitoring. I have been saying all along that Obama has dropped the ball on this in the biggest way. When I was at Bilderberg, um, look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me, the movie is posted free. I was telling anybody that would listen, I was telling police officers about what Obama was doing to the food supply, and I was asking them to look it up. If you don't believe me on this, look up what an abysmal job Obama has done. Any search engine will give you the information that you're looking for. Dr. Robert Metzger, Radiation Safety Engineering, Inc., American Chemistry Society of 2013 meeting, Contamination of, uh, it's written originally in Japanese, so sometimes when you bring it into English, it, the sentences don't flow. I'm not drunk. Contamination of food imports to the United States in the early days after Fukushima accident. Contaminated food imports into the U.S. from Japan were first observed in our laboratory on March 30th, 2011, with several products exceeding the FDA-derived intervention level of cesium and iodine. That would be radioactive poison iodine. Here are some uh, excerpts from it, from Dr. Metzger's presentation. The first observed food contamination was found on March 30th. A sushi import was found to be contaminated with 131... Eyes. I'm not sure what that stands for. Suffice to say, it's probably not a good idea to eat the glowing sushi. April 5th, a shipment of koji powder was heavily contaminated with uh, 60 C, uh, cobalt 60, 124SB, and 131I. Uh, that's iodine, I'm sorry. By July, the Iodine-131 was largely decayed away, and the primary concern was foods that were known con concentrators of some of the isotopes. In other words, it draws it in and makes it more toxic. The sample of the dried green tea leaves below has cesium concentrations of one-third that of the FDA-DIL, which would be approximately 400 becquerels per kilogram. A becquerel, once again, is one nuclear reaction going off inside of your body that can give you cancer at any time. It can lead to any number of illnesses your whole life. By July, the impact of the water releases were observed in harvests of seaweed. The sample tested is about one-third the FDA DIL for cesium, which is also approximately 400 becquerels. Don't eat seaweed. How do you get around it? Take selenium. I take selenium every single day because I can't eat seaweed to get it. Published results indicate that the FDA found little to no observable contamination. There are several possible explanations. We were testing samples from the accident was still in progress and therefore saw problems before the FDA started testing seriously. Imported food products, it says, contaminated with fission products were detected starting in late March. Conscientious, conscientious importers tested their imported foods and destroyed any food that was found to be contaminated, even at levels that were below the FDA-DIL, which of course we've gone over on this show nonstop is 
way too high. Look up Dr. Chris Busby. There is no safe level of radiation. Uh, FDA May 3rd, 2011, and this is going back in time. Listen, what a terrible job they did. They're as bad as the CDC with the Ebola mess. FDA has not detected any longer-lived radionuclides such as cesium-137 in any fish imported from Japan. They completely missed it and fed it to you. FDA is performing field examinations on approximately 40% of all seafood products. Uh-huh. It says that there were no examinations have shown levels of background uh, dangerous gamma ray gamma ray emitting radiation in other words they were only testing for one kind of radiation the kind that they knew most likely wasn't going to show up there are three kinds of radiation long time viewers we've gone over that too FDA March 2014 found no evidence of Fukushima radionuclides in the US food supply at levels that would pose a th public health concern and yet we've picked up repeatedly how many different times the levels that they have given have proven scientifically to be detrimental to your health. So, I mean, that, that's, that's how it affects us here in the States. Uh, let's go to the Burgundy blog. This is um, on spiderbomb.com. Nuclear kitty litter. This is a short one. In February, there was quite a serious radiation leak at the Waste Isolation Pilot Program. It's called WIP, and it's in New Mexico, the desert. WIP, which is in the USA for you Usher fans, was supposed to be the long-term respiratory for America's re repository for America's nuclear waste, most of which is left over from the manufacture of weapons of mass destruction. WIP has been up and running for 15 years. Its mission was to safely store nuclear waste for 10,000 years, which seems a bit strange uh, since much of this stuff remains lethal for hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. So, you know, people 10,000 years from now will just be screwed. Welcome to the world of Dr. Strange Loves. If you haven't seen the movie, by all means do. It's one of my top 10 favorites. Where every year more than 400 reactors worldwide churn out tons and tons of this lethal nuclear waste that no one knows what to do with. The strange loves appear to believe that sometime in the near future pix pixies will magically appear and spirit all of this lethal crap away. Oh well, the best laid plans of psychotics, which includes 55 gallon barrels of highly dangerous nuclear waste that explode. And there's a video here where I told you to go, and Arnie Gunderson explains it in an interview. It says, the above CNN piece so is somewhat surprising because these days it's unusual for the mainstream media to admit these things. And it goes on to talk about the movie's threads and the day after. It says, younger generations might think that it's all an ancient history. It's not because of the World War III hasn't happened like those old movies said. The Doctor Strange loves and the madness continues right to the present day with exploding barrels of nuclear waste in New Mexico and at the Fukushima. The cancer pandemic brought about by the release of these lethal man-made radionuclides into the environment, listen to this, probably will kill more people than over the decades than if there had been an all-out nuclear war. Did you hear that? Don't zone out. That's why I do these shows. Listen to this. The cancer pandemic brought about by the release of these lethal man-made radionuclearides, to reiterate, into the environment probably has and will kill people, more people, over the decades than if there had been an all-out nuclear war. At the start of this year, the World Health Organization released a report which stated that over the coming 20 years, cancer rates worldwide will increase by a staggering 70%. Now keep in mind, the cancer rate can be proven to go up in tandem with nuclear testing and nuclear power plants. Uh, look up the work of Chris Busby, Helen Caldicott, Lauren Murray, Kevin Blanche can give you the exact numbers on this. This means that in the coming decades, about 8 out of every 10 people will get cancer. Doesn't that seem a bit strange to you? The experts get wheeled out and tell us that the cancer pandemic is due to this and due to that. It's due to everything except man-made radionuclides, which are now awash in our environment and are one of the few scientifically proven carcinogens. 
That's how demented some members of the human race are. So there you go, people. There, there are the facts that cannot be argued by all of you people that somehow think that because you can't see it and taste it, it's no harm. It is the main reason for sickness and disease in the Northern Hemisphere. That is fact. All right, guys, uh, this is from K5King5.com. Workers in danger at Hanford, according to experts. A draft report obtained by King5 investigators paints a damning picture of workers' safety protocols at the Hanford site in southeastern Washington, debunking claims made by the government and a private contractor that workers were not being exposed to toxic chemicals on the job. They were... Written by top, top experts in the fields of toxicology and worker safety, the 147-page assessment condemns the system put in place to protect workers from dangerous releases of chemical vapors that occur around Hanford's tank farms. That's where 56 million gallons of the deadliest substances on Earth are stored in underground tanks. The report was prepared after a series of incidents starting last March. It sent dozens of Hanford workers to medical facilities, some suffering from acute respiratory and other health problems. Costing at least $2 million, the report was paid for by the U.S. Department of Energy, which owns Hanford, and the private contractor in charge of the tank firm. So in other words, the, 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 hens guarding the, hen, the sheep's guarding the hen's house. The current site programs and processes cannot effectively control, mitigate, respond to, and communicate about tank vapor emissions, the experts conclude in the report. The ongoing emission of known toxic tank vapors is consistent with the provision of the safe and healthful, health, healthful workplace free of recognized hazards. That contradicts statements by the Department of Energy and WRPS officials. The report's authors, the state that even short, acute exposures can lead to devastating consequences. The evidence strongly suggests that vapor exposures cause adverse health effects, including significant organ damage. So it's a broken safety system. Since March 19th, nearly 60 Hanford workers have reported symptoms after inhaling unknown chemical vapors. Months after the exposure, some of the workers are still sick and undergoing medical treatments for their symptoms, which include breathing, difficulty breathing, headaches, memory loss, and shaking. So basically, their lives have been destroyed thanks to Hanford. The King 5 investigators exposed this, sting of, this string of chemical vapor exposures at the site, as well as glaring holes in Hanford's program to protect workers from known hazards of toxic chemicals in the workplace. The problems revealed include not protecting workers with appropriate safety gear, ignoring expert advice gathered over decades on how to make the work site safer, and deceiving employees on the severity of the chemical exposures. Some findings include Hanford managers are in denial over the enormity of the vapor problem. They're lying just like they did about Fukushima and Three Mile Island. Small bursts of chemical exposures can cause adverse effects, including organ damage. Yeah, of course. Uh, workers are being exposed to chemical concentrations above the acceptable occupational levels. And as we've already said, those levels were already deadly. The federal government's contractor is in violation of federal regulations that require a workplace free of hazards, illness, or death. Well, that's not much to ask. WRPS is using flawed science to measure how serious the exposures are to employees. Or we've gone over how they do that in our Ebola updates. The site has inadequate vapor monitoring systems, and WRPS nor the Department of Energy know exactly what chemicals the employees are inhaling when the exposed to tank emissions. Of course, the bosses say that there's absolutely no problem. They are going to be sued blind for this, as they should be. I mean, what I've just read to you is the destruction of people's lives. We do have smells in the tank farms that cause irritation, said Fletcher. They use ammonia in the medical field for a reason because it creates a mild acid and creates irritation. If you've ever done one of those ammonia capsules near you, you don't want to do it twice because it's a quick make up, wake up. Friends, all things nuclear need to go. 
And this idea that we can somehow house these deadly nuclear elements and these chemical elements safely is we need to not make them. That's what we need to do. And to do anything else, as I've just pointed out to you, scientifically proven to kill us. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Don't go anywhere. we got three left, including the dumdy of the day. I just want to remind you to uh, check out the Arcadia Grill because the Arcadia Grill will give you some of the best food that you have ever eaten. You can find them on Court Avenue, and it's in Canton. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio at all, make the drive over and be delighted that you did. Also, friends, support Neopa Radio. Neopa Radio will be syndicating the correct views and that will bring it to a much larger base here in uh, Canton, Ohio, where this show is based at. They also are going to be running music. It's good music. Uh, to say that's not Drake. It's not Beyonce. It's not Nickelback. How's that? Uh, Neopa Radio. Look them up. All right, guys. TheGuardian.com. Russia snubs nuclear security meeting. This is incredibly bad news. Uh, look up Mavec. Look up Chernobyl. Russia has a terrible history. Look up uh, the... Uh, documentary movie that uh, Harrison Ford is in about their nuclear sub. Kyle don't know what it's called. The name escapes me, but it's excellent. Russia failed to show up at a meeting planning a 2016 nuclear security summit. U.S. and Europe, European officials set on Monday, leaving unclear Moscow's intentions for future participation in the talks. So basically, the Obama policies have led to the downfall of everything that Nixon, and to a larger degree Reagan, did to tear down the Cold War. Having said that, Putin is a dreadful person. Just because Obama is a dreadful person doesn't mean that Putin isn't. He's a terrible person. He has been um, flying planes all over Europe, which is... uh, could very easily spark World War III. Well, now he doesn't want to talk about um, nuclear... He doesn't want to be at the nuclear summit talks. More problems. The officials were unaware whether Russia meant to boycott the summit itself or was staging a temporary show of displeasure over Western condemnation and sanctions for its role in the unrest in the Ukraine. The U.S. has been a huge reason for the unrest there. Well, so has Russia. Two dreadful leaders. Three or four planning meetings are scheduled before the spring of 2016 when the summit is tentatively set to open. With Russia one of the world's five formally recognized nuclear power, its input is crucial to setting an agenda. In 2010, Barack Obama initiated a series of summits aimed at preventing terrorists from getting their hands on weapons-grade nuclear material. Meanwhile, he's been uh, selling our weapons and giving our weapons to moderates, who, as we've proven here, you can look it up, have been selling it and giving it away to the highest bidder uh, with ISIS. But, you know, they won't get nuclear material, we'll just give them everything else. Since then, the number of countries thought to have enough material to build a nuclear weapon has fallen from 39 to 25. And then you've got, you know, lunatics like North Korea and Iran that still think it's a good idea. At the last summit this year at The Hague, 35 countries pledged to turn international guidelines on nuclear security into national laws and allow independent scrutiny of their procedures for protecting their nuclear installations, which they shouldn't have. The summit also featured new reduction commitments with Japan, Italy, and Belgium agreeing to cut their stocks of highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Japan, between us nuking them and them nuking themselves, I don't know who is glowing more, them or uh, Russia, due to the way they've nuked themselves. At the same time, there were setbacks. Russia was notably absent from the 35-nation agreement, along with China. Yeah, they're nice and peaceful. They've only put pictures up on display of nuclear mushrooms going off over our country. India and Pakistan, two of the most unstable countries with nuclear weapons in the region with no mutual respect for each other at all. Uh, Pakistan is, of course, the, the main aggressor there, but that isn't to say that India is without its sin. And it says all nations with nuclear weapons. Officials said that with one exception of Russia, all 54 countries that participated in this year's March summit attended the preparatory meeting in Washington. I need another drink. 
Patrick Ventrell, a spokesman for the National Security Council at the White House, said the U.S. regretted the Russian absence. I bet they did. As far as the U.S. is concerned, the door remains open for joining such meetings. So, yeah, they don't know if Russia just happened to miss it on accident and not tell anybody they really did plan to attend. What could, who believes that spin? Nuclear analyst Kenneth uh, Luongo said that even if Moscow did show up in 2016, its boycott of planning meetings reflects horribly on Russian priorities. Yeah, well, Putin, again, he's not to be trusted any more than Obama is. Friends, the JapanTimes.co.jp. TEPCO removes all spent fuel rods from a nuclear reactor for pool. This is wonderful news. If there is to be wonderful news at all, then regarding Fukushima, this would be it. Tokyo Electric Power Company, which is TEPCO, which is GE, which is where you should never have your money in stocks or mutual funds, said Wednesday that it had finished removing all used fuel from the storage pool in the Reactor 4 building, leaving only less risky unused material in the pool. Less risky. But dismantling the entire facility still has to overcome the high levels of radioactive substances being emitted by Reactors 1, 2, and 3, which suffered meltdowns, might I add melt-throughs and melt-outs, in the wake of the catastrophic tsunami and earthquake in March of 2011. And again, much of the meltdowns, not all of the reactors, but some of the reactors began melting down when the earthquake hit before the tsunami hit. Why does that matter? Because the um, plants all over the world could be in trouble if an earthquake is causing a meltdown, and it did. A total of 1,331 spent fuel rod assemblies have now been moved out of the number four building to more stable conditions in a different building. The number four spent fuel pool is on the top floor of the building, which is an awful idea, and it was rocked by a hydrogen explosion early in the crisis that would be a nuclear hydrogen explosion. TEPCO has been removing fuel from the pool since last November, starting with 22 of the 202 unused fuel assemblies that were stored there. That could have been catastrophic. The removed fuel includes three damaged spent fuel assemblies that were in the pool prior to the nuclear disaster. The remaining 180 unused fuel assemblies are expected to be taken out by the end of the year, TEPCO said. The process takes place underwater, with the fuel assemblies being placed one by one into a transport container. When the container is filled with fuel assemblies, workers use a crane to take it out of the pool and then lower it from the fifth floor. Hey, that sounds stable in an earthquake zone. At ground level, it is trucked to a safer pool about 100 meters away. The Reactor 4 did not suffer a meltdown after the tsunami struck because it was offline for a periodic inspection and maintenance work. Even so, it says the spent fuel pool on the highest floor of the crumbling building was a major source of concern in the early days of the crisis as the water level was suspected of dropping enough to expose the fuel rods. TEPCO, it goes on later, said the fuel in the pool probably did not sustain major damage. Removing the fuel from the three other reactors has been hampered by high levels of radiation. They don't even have the science to get near them. TEPCO has said it will delay the start of the process at Reactor 1 by two years to 2019. So yeah, earthquakes and tsunamis will just promise not to knock it over you know, 2019. They've got that written guarantee, I guess. They talk to the fish. The effort will be rife with challenges as the utility has no idea where the melted fuel is located inside the reactor, while much of it is a black goo on the streets of Tokyo. Guys, that brings us to the dum de dum de dum de of the day. Uh, we're going to have the Dunce Cap of the Month Award being recorded Thursday. Regular viewers know that the Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes out once a month. Can't always get to everyone, so we have the dum -dee of the day. While Fukushima update is no exception, this is from the telegraph.co.uk. Mystery drones breach airspace above French nuclear sites. The more I read this, the absolute dumber the French nuclear industry is on this. It's by Henry Samuel in Paris. Unidentified drones big enough to carry explosives have flown over as many as seven nuclear power plants around France in the past three weeks. It has emerged. 
to be worse than what Hitler did to them. Electricity de France, the state-owned operator of France's 58 nuclear reactors across 19 sites, has filed a legal complaint against persons unknown following the flights over seven sites. Sparking fears that the country's reactors are unsafe from airborne attack, none of the drones were intercepted and their origins remain a mystery. In other words, they don't know where they came from, they weren't able to stop them, and if they had had weaponry, you would be hosed in uh, Opawi right now. It is forbidden to enter airspace within a 5-kilometer perimeter around nuclear sites or to fly over them at an altitude below 1,000 meters. Of course, you know, that just means nobody will do it, you know. If you make guns illegal, then guns will go away. It worked for drugs, didn't it? Well, now it seems to be working for drone airspaces. October 5th, it says a drone flew over the nuclear power plant at Cray's Malville in Isere, southern France. This was followed by airspace incursions in grave lines in the north, Catanum in the eastern Mosul, La Blaise in the western Gironde area, Bergay in eastern central, Chus in northeastern Ardennes, and Nougat sur Serene, southeast France. So basically, the entire French security system in terms of nuclear awareness and protection is worthless. In one case, on October 19th, drones were flown at the same time over several sites hundreds of miles apart, so they could have blown up more than one at a time, which would have created a problem in Europe probably unprecedented. Did you hear that? At least one of the unmanned aircraft was big enough to carry a bomb, experts said. We're not talking about just one type of drone identified, but several, a nuclear expert told Lee Parisian. So it's very likely that somebody was testing it to see if they could do it to get the best working drone. Some were only a few dozen centimeters long with a very short range of several hundred meters at most. You know, spying! But they don't mention that. No, that couldn't have been an option. So you'd need to be very close to the reactor. But others, and this is much more worryingly, were far bigger, perhaps two meters long, so significantly big enough to carry an explosive charge, the expert said. The flights took place at night or early morning. Another source told the paper that other sites, including a military nuclear location and one operated by Riva, a state-run nuclear company, were also targeted. Riva is the one who made the water filtering thing that's kind of works in Fukushima. EDF sought to play down the safety implications of the blatant security breach, saying, listen to what I think of the dumb the other day. We have no fear concerning a drone flying over our installations. These objects are not capable of damaging anything if they fall, nor is any object that they might drop. No, not at all. Absolutely not. You can just go blowing things up by reactors. You're not going to hit one of the water mains and release nuclear water all over the place. Nah. Bonehead! The French Air Force is tasked with protecting nuclear plants, which are designed to withstand the hit by an airliner. The military force added, source added, the idea that it is a reconnaissance in preparation for a terrorist act is not one that we consider most likely. Rather, we think it's a communication operation. Yeah, because anything else would prove how incompetent you are. Greenpeace, the environmental group, has often drawn attention to security risks in French nuclear plants and in 2012 flew over a reactor on a micro light filming the operation with a drone. Oh, yeah, so, you know, it happened then in 2012. We're so much better off today in 2014, clearly. It practically was in a steampunk plane and was able to make it. However, it categorically denied any involvement. Greenpeace did not do it this time. The group said it had received proof that drones also flew over two other sites, Tricastin in southeastern Drome area and Fresh Fiesenheim in Hot Rin. I don't know. I don't speak French. According to Le Persion, the EDF has created a working group with genderings to work out how to tackle such intrusions. France has the second largest nuclear fleet after the United States, and its nuclear plants produce 75% of its electricity, the highest proportion of any country in the world. That is how you risk poisoning all of Europe, by building a stupid-ass nuclear power plant, which you should never do. That's the dumb D of the day, dunce cap of the month.
month happens Thursday. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Please look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself on The Media Speaks. And make up. Make sure you look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, who is really doing some of the best writing extant today. Go to Facebook, look up Mike McLaughlin, and tell him you want to read some of his stories. You will be delighted that you did. Good night, friends. God bless. And please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com because every penny you give to me goes towards a better show.